Yeah. 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 Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here. It's the final episode of Fluffy Dino Lads, and while I like in his image, he goes a bit off the deep end in this one. I don't want to give anything away, so let's just get right into it. Tianyuang. Tianyuang. It's named for a museum. Oh cool! Tianyuang is a heterodontosaurid ornithischian. That's about as far away from a bird as you can get in terms of dinosaurs. So no way we're going to get this one mixed up and call it a bird. Somebody at that museum's got a big ego, I guess. <laughs> Uh, has some strange teeth there you can see in the front. Yep, heterodontosaurids have really weird teeth. In fact, they had tusks, which is basically unique among reptiles. Um, it's kind of disarticulated. You really can't get too much out of this particular one. Uh, but you can see the tail is very bird-like. So I'm going ahead and call this thing a bird. Yeah. Um... I mean, I'm embarrassed for them that they put something like that up. Because that's awful. That looks like a very bad Pablo Picasso painting idea. I mean, that's terrible. That is not what the creature looked like. I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed for in his image. Because while that is not a great image, this animal is 100% not a bird. Honestly, it couldn't be farther from a bird and still be a dinosaur. Perhaps relying on hemal arches isn't a good way to identify a bird as such. Now this one, the next one here, is easily the most famous dinosaur in this entire presentation. And evolutionists want to give it feathers and call it a bird ancestor. And that is Velociraptor. Yes, the kings of Jurassic Park. Right, those animals with the skeleton identical to that of Microraptor, which remember, he is already identified as a bird. Or something like that. Um, I've actually not seen the Jurassic Park or the Jurassic World movies, so I don't know anything about them, how they're portrayed, portrayed in that, other than the fact that they're much too large. The actual Velociraptors were about turkey size, and the ones in, um, well, in Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, were much larger than that. They were actually probably about the size of a Nacus, which is relative. First, Jurassic Park is a good movie. If you somehow haven't seen it, go see it. And in fact, the Velociraptors in the movie were much larger than even Deinonychus. They were closer in size to Dakota Raptor or Utah Raptor, although they were actually based off the proportions and skull shape of Deinonychus, not Velociraptor. Basically, the only reason they got the name Velociraptor is because it was a cool name. But anyways, Velociraptors are cool. I like Velociraptors, and I would hate to see them turned into a bird, even if that, well, whether they are or they aren't. Well, they're not birds, but they were covered in feathers, although since in his image has already identified a member of the same family as a bird, I'm not sure why he's currently opposed to them being birds. In fact, Alan Fiducia would say that they are birds, and he seems to like Alan Fiducia. It has no bearing on my opinion, but you know, I would hate to see them turn no bird, just because I think, you know, think of a pack of raptors, it's a very cool, uh, very cool idea. So their name means Swift Caesar. Um, their feathers, however, are inferred. They're not actually um, known for certain. Like I said in an earlier episode, they're inferred the same way an animal's biceps are inferred. There's every reason to think they existed, we have attachment points for them, and the idea that they did not exist is simply crazy. Crazy enough to be dismissed out of hand, short of compelling evidence to the contrary. Um, you have, this is a Velociraptor um, with a tail there. The hip has what could be a very prominent ischial blade, um, iliac blade rather, um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell from this image. Um, but it does seem to have um, hemal arches and hemal and neural arches. Yeah, arches identical to the ones in Microraptor. A bird, according to him, and answers in Genesis. So I would say that this thing had a muscular tail that could be used for counterbalance, and thus this actually is a dinosaur. No, it had an almost completely immobile tail that could only flex at the base, just like all the birds he's already identified. In fact, the tail was so stiff that the tendons between the vertebrae ossified. That is, they turned to bone. The whole posterior end of the tail was basically a single mass of bone. This is the most bird-like a tail can be without being the tail of a bird. It's far more bird-like than any of the animals that we've already identified as a bird, like Heterodontosaurus. Now this one's a fun one. Yi. Or Yai, or whatever. However you pronounce it. It's Chinese. I barely speak English here, okay? Uh, <laughs> but Yai. 
What is Yai? Well, first, that's another David Peters drawing. I noticed because, well, it seemed odd that you would compare a dinosaur to a bat, and that made me suspicious, so I checked. Sure enough, Pterosaur Heresies. I really hate that Google so heavily promotes that trash website. Well, it could be a bird. Nope, couldn't be a bird. It could be a mammal? No, it absolutely could not be a mammal. Not under any circumstances could that be confused with a mammal by anyone competent enough with comparative anatomy to know what a mammal skeleton even looks like. I really want to emphasize this. There is absolutely no way to think that ye is a mammal unless you have no idea what a mammal skeleton looks like. It is on exactly the same level as mixing up an eagle and a gorilla. It could be a lot of things, just based on the wing structure, because it has wings, obviously. But they're filamentous wings. They're not typical bird wings. Well, they're membranous wings. Birds, in fact, are the ones with filamentous wings. They're more like a mammal than anything else, but it definitely is not a mammal, because it definitely looks to have some form of featheration or something like that. So what is this? Yi's wings only look like mammal wings in the broadest sense. Any actual examination of real bat wings compared to Yi's wings will show that, in fact, they share very few structural similarities beyond the broad aspect of having been put together mostly by skin. And what it is, is a member of Scansoriopterygidae, a family of crow to robin sized arboreal paravians, which is to say, it's a dinosaur, but not a bird. Well, yeah, I would say it has filaments. Um, whether it actually has any real feathers, I would, can't tell for sure. It's kind of disarticulated here. Well, if you had bothered to look at other members of the family, such as Epidexepteryx, he'd have seen that they do have true feathers. Except, wait, he did look at it. But I cut it out, and he said it was definitely a bird. So now a creature that is essentially the same as Epidexepteryx, but bigger, is now a mystery, and could even be a mammal? Although, to be fair, it seems like he's against the mammalian affinity. Um, I would say maybe a pterosaur. What about this says it's a pterosaur? Is it that the wing isn't supported by an elongate digit 4? Is it the lack of a pteroid bone, a key feature of pterosaurs? Is it the lack of a prepubis, another feature of all pterosaurs? Is it the dew-like claw on digit 1 on the foot, even though pterosaurs had four walking toes? Is it the wrong number of fingers for a pterosaur overall? Is it the lack of an otarium, even though pterosaurs had those? I honestly cannot fathom how anyone who knows what a pterosaur is could think that this is a pterosaur. The only conclusion I can come to is that in his image doesn't know what a pterosaur is, but he also seems to not know what a mammal is, what a dinosaur is, or what a bird is. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. It is pretty heavily disarticulated. Now, I'm going to read this and say this is wrong, but the only reason I'm reading it and saying it's wrong is because half the wing is feathered and half of it isn't. Wait, so he thinks that it was a pterosaur, but his objection to this reconstruction isn't that it has true feathers rather than pycnofibers like a pterosaur, or that the wing structure is completely wrong, or that the feet are completely wrong. It's that the feathers are either too or insufficiently extensive? You don't have a half-feathered, half-membranous wing. I'm sorry, it's just not that way. Um, well, that's just an empty assertion. Why can't a wing be partially feathered and partially membranous? Because that doesn't happen today? Well, today we have partially furry and partially membranous wings. Is that possible? Maybe. I, I'm guessing this is probably a pterosaur of some kind. Um, either that or a badly, badly mangled bird. Um, but it's definitely not a reptile. But pterosaurs are reptiles. I, honestly, this one just broke me. I, I can't with this one. I have no words. My words have failed me. This one is just fractally wrong. He's wrong at every conceivable scale. Or at least not a dinosaur. It could be a pterosaur and that's a reptile, but it's not a dinosaur. Oh, so he does know that pterosaurs are reptiles. That restored a bit of sanity. Although birds are also reptiles, and pterosaurs are reptiles with those pneumatic bones and one-way lungs powered by air sacs, like a bird. So I'm not sure he would really consider pterosaurs reptiles, since they violate his self-proclaimed rules for reptiles. Now, Yingxiangosaurus. Yingxiang means Yingxiang lizard. It's very partial. Um, this image here on the left is what I'm worked with, worked from. It has some bird bones listed, the coracoid bone, the scapula, the, fur, the furcula in particular, the, and the coracoids. Okay, a scapula is something all tetrapods have, and coracoids are something that all tetrapods but mammals have. They are bird bones in the same way a femur is a bird bone, in that, yeah, birds have them, but so does pretty much everyone else. The furcula you could call a bird bone in that modern-day birds, well, birds and myself, have furcula, 
but it's a common element even in fairly basal theropods. So really it's a theropod bone, and birds are theropods, and theropods are dinosaurs. But that being said, I'm skipping the rest of his Yishianosaurus discussion. He says it was probably a bird. Um, so why is there so much controversy over this? Well, evolutionists obviously want to um, create feathered dinosaurs. But no one is creating feathered dinosaurs. There isn't some cabal of paleontologists standing around a pentagram made of dinosaur skulls, plotting to fake feathers on dinosaurs, or just pretend that they were there without having any evidence. Nor is there some lab churning out artificially aged fossils or genetically engineered dinosaur lookalikes with feathers so that they can be sold in the illegal fossil markets of China. Paleontologists accept that there were feathered dinosaurs for the same reason they accept that there were dinosaurs with fingers. We have fossils of dinosaurs with fingers and dinosaurs with feathers. Granted, fingers are more likely to preserve than feathers, but we still know about both of them because they both fossilize. They really don't even have consensus within their own community. I'm going to show you a couple of quotes here in conclusion. Um, one's from Dr. Alan Fiducia, who we've already mentioned. The other's from Dr. Richard Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe, I believe, operates out of Wales, while Fiducia operates out of North Carolina. Uh, listen to this, Hinchcliffe. Developmental evidence of 234-digit identity for the wings of birds, as argued here. So in other words, which fingers um, develop in birds to create their wings. Um, as argued here, continue to pose problems for acceptance of the theory of origin of birds from theropod dinosaurs. So in other words, they developed the wrong from the wrong fingers. That's a problem. Except we now know that birds have undergone a frame shift, and in fact, bird wings have digits 1, 2, and 3. And unlike in most tetrapods, where the central digit is 3, in birds it is 2 as a result of this. The genetics behind it have even been identified, so this simply isn't a problem. Fiducia, we conclude that protofeathers are probably the remains of collagenous fiber meshworks that reinforce the dinosaur integument. So in other words, protofeathers don't exist. They're collagen. Collagen fibers. Except that even Dr. Fiducia can no longer defend that position, and has instead retreated to the position that a huge swath of dinosaurs that aren't birds at all are actually flightless birds that just evolved to look like dinosaurs. A position I think creationists, and those who know their science, would both find less tenable than the evolution of birds from theropods. So, in conclusion here, do we have any feathered dinosaurs? Yes. Yes, we do. But I think that'll do it for this little series. I don't know if in his image we'll see this, but I hope so. And I know that at times I can get a little snarky, but I hope he understands that it's in the name of keeping these videos fun. I want to repeat that I really do think in his image seems like a cool guy. When we chatted, he was very relaxed, and he was having fun, and so was I. And we certainly didn't get heated, and it stayed respectful. And I want to repeat what I said in the very first episode. Please, if you go over to his channel, show him that same respect and decorum. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for sticking with me through this. I had fun, even if the E discussion did sort of break my brain. If you liked this video, please remember to hit the like button and comment. If you didn't, feel free to hit the dislike button and tell me why you didn't like it. If you want to see more of my content, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're always notified when there's new Dapper Dino content. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons, especially my $20 and above patrons Ben Tovind, Ian Chen, Speed of Sound, Chris Love, Henry Hutanen, Bob Knob, The Evil Scotsman. My patrons help make this channel possible, and if you'd like to join the team over on Patreon, you can get early access to videos, polls, as well as an exclusive Discord server for patrons only. The minimum tier is only $1 a month, and it goes all the way up to $100 a month if you're feeling really generous. If you'd still like to help the channel, but you feel like a monthly pledge isn't right for you, I also have a Teespring store where you can get merchandise including t-shirts and even a really cool fleece blanket. I also have an Amazon wishlist linked in the description. And if none of those are right for you, then simply just liking and sharing this video is a huge help to the channel. It really helps get me more views and more subscribers, and helps the channel grow. <laughs> How would you tell me to do that? You first, first. How would you tell me to do that? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.